If there was any doubt that we live in the future, it's gone. For the first time, again, scientists have genetically modified a human embryo. But this time they didn't just modify them, they birthed them. There are allegedly genetically modified humans living on Earth right now. What we really need to know, is this future we're now living in dystopian? Or not? Nah? I have questions. Welcome to Uno Dose of Trace, everybody. Thank you for coming around. I am so excited for all of you new people. If you are new here, because a bunch of you are, welcome. This is I Have Questions. It's a weekly form of Uno Dose of Trace where I answer some of my own curiosities and satisfy those about something strange that I'm seeing out in the world. So settle in and let's talk about designer babies, shall we? Genetic engineering is complex and it's wide reaching. We can engineer all sorts of organisms and it's been done a lot, plants and animals, crops and foods. But when it comes to changing humans, we've mostly avoided it. We can absolutely do it, but we don't because of ethics because we have to do it when there's only one or two cells involved, a sperm, an egg, or an embryo. And that human that would someday exist wouldn't be able to give consent for that, and neither would their offspring, and we would change them forever. It's called germline modification, and it's a genetic change that's passed down in offspring forever. But, argue some, what if it's good? What if we're just curing disease or fixing genetic disorders? What if you could design your baby to be perfect and healthy? The term design your baby comes from the idea that a parent or sets of parents can pick a baby's eye color and sex, hair color and height, but science fiction offers a further promise of selecting intelligence and attractiveness and muscle tone and athletic ability, or you have a bunch of money so you just pick everything. Funnily enough, this makes me think of the college admission scandal that we've got going on right now, because rich people will do if they have the means. But if you can, shouldn't you? Why or why not? This debate is at the forefront of bioethics right now because of Chinese scientist He Zhangqi. He claims he genetically modified the embryos of twin girls who were born genetically modified to have a single mutation that would resist HIV. They were designed humans. They are designed humans. They maybe aren't designed to be tall, or live for a long time, or be, you know, perfect in every way, or whatever. But they are designed, and that opens the door for other modifications, and people freaked. The scientist has been fired, the Chinese government is denying any funding or involvement. Basically, what he did was modify one gene, CCR5, and that modified the co-receptor for CCR5 on our white blood cells. See, HIV invades the body and latches onto white blood cells. Think of like the International Space Station as handholds out there for the astronauts. The viruses are the same. They grab onto these handholds on our white blood cells to have a little doorway, a little infection point into our cell, a foothold. Instead of having a big prominent bump like most CCR5 would have, the mutated version has a tiny little bump. So the virus can't grab on and we can't get infected as easily, and it can't pass that virus from cell to cell. You might be thinking, that sounds okay. What's a tiny little bump on a white blood cell between friends, you know what I'm saying? But there are side effects to this mutation. The chances of getting West Nile infection might increase. There's a study with mice that have a CCR5 modification that found that they had increased learning ability. They got smarter. Now watching TV, you'd think that we'd know everything about our genomes, but we actually don't. We know very little, so there could be other side effects we don't even know about. So now that you know what's up, let's go outside the box. Why are people so upset? What's the harm? What's gonna happen with this? Like I already said, I have questions. So I asked my friend who's really good at thinking ahead and talking through all the connections you might not think to make, but he's not here, so we're gonna have to go to his place. So I'm here with Hank now. Hi. 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 You probably know who Hank is. Hi, I'm Hank. Yeah. You don't, you, I'm, I make science videos on YouTube and oh, other videos. Nice. So we're going to talk about genetically modifying the humanities. Uh, uh huh. And the so species particularly. Our current species really. Okay. Maybe not the species in the future depending on how much we modify it. Uh, I thought I would get an opinion of somebody who at least has some background in this. My background psychology, so. Biochemistry is my, mm -hmm. is my background. Uh, though that was a long time ago, I will admit, and science has changed. It has changed. Yeah. Recently, in fact. It keeps changing very fast. <laughs> we do not have a lot of the things we have now. So this has now happened once. It has. In, in real human children. Yeah. And it was pretty much universally condemned by the scientific community because, in this specific instance, they were making it so that it would be very difficult or impossible for these kids to contract HIV. Right. It was not something that treated an existing disease. Mm -hmm. um, it was doing something that we already have ways of doing, which is protecting against the transmission of HIV. And 
it was not approved by anyone. Yeah, in <laughs> fact, the hospital that the guy did it at says that they did not approve this and have no knowledge of it. We're doing germline modification now. It's happening. It happened. We did it. We've already done it. And... <sighs> yeah. It's been in science fiction since I was little. Yeah. And yeah. before that, I am super in favor of curing diseases, but it has become so clear so fast that you can find the fuzzy in that line. It seems very difficult to imagine this tool becoming widely used without becoming widely misused. I, I wanted to kind of list a couple of the, the pros and cons. So like, okay. if I'm in the pro argument, we can get rid of disease. Yeah, that's the big one. <laughs> we can get rid of, you know, Alzheimer's eventually and Huntington's and other genetically based or like hereditary disorders. Yeah, I mean, it's um, important to note that like, Many diseases are not hereditary, and some have hereditary components that are like 10 to 20 percent. Even like cure disease is kind of a slippery slope because yeah. it's like, okay, well, if you can afford it, we'll give you the Huntington's thing because that's like right. that's everybody and that's a one gene thing and we know exactly where that gene is and that's easy. But if you have more money, then we could be like, okay, we're going to lower your chances of prostate cancer by 10 percent. Right. And like the value proposition is different if you're a wealthy person than if you're a poor person. Okay, so what if we can say to a parent, we want to make your child, like, lower the chances that they will have this particular disorder. Wonderful. As the parent, I would love that. And then, just by chance, and, like, everyone knows this, but it's not in the book, that's going to make them taller. Or mm. it's going to make them have blue eyes. Or it's going to make them more intelligent. And so you're saying your kid is never going to get this disease. They have, they're going to have a much lower chance of prostate cancer, but also this change changes the baby in other ways. Right. And that's actually what they're going for. And it's a way, it's like a loop hole to like get around you know this sort of international mandate which is like we need to use this to cure diseases mm -hmm. we are not going to use it to make better people right because that is the terrifying future yeah but even in this first case you have a potential that you've created a loophole on try number one there are a lot of people with a lot of money who would pay a lot of money to have a kid who is hard-working and smart mm -hmm. and pretty and yeah. strong. And taller yeah. and has a lower risk of a variety of different disorders that we can sort of predict. And that's a huge on the con side because it's like this is going to end up being like a 1% Gattaca situation yeah. where I can produce children of superior quality if I have money to do so. And I don't know if you watched Altered Carbon or have read those books, but I it's did. like you get these people that live for 200 years or 300 years mm -hmm. and amass huge amounts of wealth and then they pass that on to their children who live for two or three hundred years and then you have a fiefdom essentially yeah. Yeah. where there's a bunch of people who can't access this information and a bunch of people who can we are already on that path like it's, it is a it's a na it's an inevitable consequence of capitalism it's an inevitable consequence of capital even mm -hmm. yeah um but there can be forces that push against it and there must be because otherwise yeah uh, you know there's something like there's thousands of different genes that have been identified that affect a person's height. Mm. Most of them are on the order of millimeters. Mm -hmm. And so in order to have a tall person, you have to modify a lot of different spots. Yeah. It's not an easy thing, but I bet people who have a hundred million dollars could find a way to pay for it. Yeah. So that becomes a very weird question. And also one like we will have no idea until we do it. Mm. Like we will just not know the effect that that will have on society until it gets done. And that's scary because the effect is not small. The other thing is that it seems impossible for it to happen in an equitable way. Yeah, it does. And that's a, that's a big one for me in the yeah. con column. Is like, like life expectancy is the same way. 100% yeah. if we are able to extend the, the lifespan of an organism, we will give it to our dogs before we give it to the poor. Gotten a lot of negatives here. I wonder right. if there's well, another I mean, the, positive. The, the, well, there's the... Like, people dying of diseases is really bad. Yeah. And if we can fix that, we yeah, should. Right. That's, but, uh, at least that's what the scientists are trying to say. They're like, if we can do something about it, we should do something about it. Let's just genetic genetically modify the entire human race so that we all have the same blood type. See? Wouldn't that be It'd be great. much easier. Perfect. There are both pros and cons to modifying a human embryo. Yeah. I think there's absolutely reasons to do it. Mm -hmm. Yes, like there are there are one gene problems that we have that kill people. Yeah, both before they are born, but also like well into their lives. You know, we, like you're, we're all familiar with these diseases. People probably know someone with a disease like that. Yeah, 
and the fact that a disease like that could not only be cured for that person, but like that we could basically eradicate it from the population if we said like, we're just going to change everybody's genetics, they will never pass this down to right. another person again. Yeah. Right. Because if you argue that like, well, if we can cure diseases, then why don't we just cure the human condition, right? Yes. Like I can eat as much as I want and I won't gain weight because my body has been genetically modified mm -hmm. to only absorb energy as needed and then I just graze all day. Yes. And that sort of leads into the where does the con become the pro because yeah. ultimately if you are genetically modifying people to be smarter is that bad mm -hmm. like it's good to have smart people on the planet that in itself is a wibbly question like that is a weird ethical yeah, yeah, question yeah, yeah. is it okay even if we did it equitably would it be okay and i'm sort of leaning on the yes side of that yeah because i don't know that's smart people are that's great. an amazing frontier and like what does it mean and mm -hmm. that that seems like kind of like it's pushing a boundary that is interesting to me humanity but, might be better as a, yeah. as a society we might be better we might be able to recognize yeah, maybe like maybe weaknesses. we have to genetically modify people to be nice to each other <laughs> and equitable that's the first that's the only that's thing the we're thing allowed to genetically go, modify yeah, for. i like this i like this <laughs> don't worry about height intelligence you could do some disease eradication <laughs> No, really before we thing. even do Make disease people nicer <laughs> and kinder to each other. And that way, yeah. you know what? Once we do that, everyone will want to be like, oh, we should get rid of these diseases. That's just so nice. It'd be much nicer if we could do that <laughs> for everyone. We'd be a very friendly planet. Yeah, how do we? Would we be yeah. the planet that the alien shows up and they're like, why is everyone so nice? Yeah. God, what a boring place. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> whole, it's just like 100% honey bears. Like, I don't, I don't need to be there. It you go to boring. the grocery store and everyone tells you their life story. Oh my God, are you buying those chips? I bought those chips for my aunt the other day. <laughs> it was amazing. It's you basically take... Missoula, Montana. So it seems like there are pros and there are cons on both sides. The cons seem to outweigh the pros in some ways, but I think we're both in agreement that this is likely going to happen. Yeah. So if we do it, we should at least think about the implications before right. we just start willy-nilly modifying everything. And I think that it's good that we're thinking about it now and that there is a consensus among the scientific community that, like, working on disease is okay, working on, like, designer babies is not. Yeah. The fuzziness between that line is surprisingly fuzzy already, which I did not expect. Same. Yeah. All right. Well, let's go back to my studio. Thanks, Hank. Okay, bye. Can I clap us back to the studio? If you want, yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. If you don't already follow Hank, you can go and find him all over the internet. So thanks, Hank, for being on the show. Genetic modification can be done once someone is alive, by the way. We didn't really get into this. It's called gene therapy, and it's used to treat disorders of the body that are hereditary, and you already have them. So they modify some of your genes, and they put your cells in your body. But there are trillions of cells in a person. So no matter what science fiction says, we cannot change them all at once. So for the moment, in order to change humanity, we have to change embryos. And to kind of recap, Future humans don't get a choice in that matter. However, there are some on the pro side who say, so what? You don't get to pick who your parents are in any situation, and they're gonna make choices that will affect their offspring. They do it all the time. Studies show lifetime stress and starvation can affect future offspring. Epigenetics can affect your offspring, and that's affected by how you live your life. UV exposure modifies genes and could theoretically cause a mutation to be passed into offspring, and if you didn't spend as much time in the sun, maybe that wouldn't happen. You never know. The point is, I'm not saying one or the other is correct. What I'm saying is, it's a debate and there's still a lot we don't know. So thinking even further outside the box, what if we don't do any of this until quantum computing comes on the scene? It might seem like a non sequitur. Quantum computing will let us virtualize proteins and DNA, literal virtual molecules inside of the computer that will behave like actual molecules so we could simulate what might happen. And I'm no expert, and this would likely require quantum supercomputers, and we are not there yet, but it seems like it would be safer than spitting out genetically modified humans without knowing future ramifications. In the end, we can all agree HIV is a horrifying disease, and its syndrome AIDS has devastated populations for decades, and it's still ongoing today. Around 40 million people live with HIV globally, most in Eastern and Southern Africa. And complicating this debate further, 10% of European populations already have a CCR5 mutation. That means they likely won't get HIV, and that's a natural mutation. For them as well, it would affect West Nile and maybe learning. 
More research is needed. That's all I'm saying. It's my mantra. It's true. Special thanks to Hank Green for coming on Uno Dose of Trace. Again, go follow him if you're one of the few people who don't already. Shout out to Patreon Technophile for his suggestion. Thank you so much, Russ. Thanks to all the other NerdFam supporters over on Patreon. If you want to join, there's a link down in the description and it helps make more of this show. So thanks so much and I will see you in the future.